In this problem, we're asked to approximate the kinetic energy due to the Earth's rotation. So I was trying to be very clear about that because there's all sorts of kinetic energy associated with the Earth. There's the rotation about its own axis. There's the revolution about the sun. In addition to that, there would be the motion of the entire solar system through the galaxy. So we're just looking at the spin of the Earth. So we're making some approximations, obviously. We want to assume the Earth is solid which is not true. There's all kinds of complex dynamics going on in the liquid outer core and so on. Perfectly spherical, also not true. It's a little bit squished, so a little bit larger radius at the equator than it has at the poles. But this is a good first approximation. We're given the mass. We're given the radius. And here's a picture of the Earth. And if I model it as a solid sphere, I have to use the moment of inertia formula, I equals two-fifths mr squared. And then this rotational kinetic energy is going to be given by one half I omega squared. So we have everything we need to get the moment of inertia, but what about omega? I need the angular velocity in radians per second. We've got a lot of unit analysis to do. I know that I get one rotation every 24 hours, roughly speaking, and I need to convert that into radians per second. So let's get started on that. So omega is one rotation per 24 hours. Well, there's two pi radians in one rotation, so that term is gone. And one hour is 3,600 seconds, 60 minutes per hour multiplied by 60 seconds per minute. So my hours cancel. And I end up with 7.27 times 10 to the negative fifth radians per second. Okay, let's work on the moment of inertia. I is 2 fifths times the mass times the radius squared. And I get 9.69 times 10 to the 37 kilogram meters squared. Finally, we can write down the kinetic energy in the spin of the Earth. That's one half times I. Times omega squared. And I end up with 2.56 times 10 to the 29 joules 